straight punches beat looping punches. You guys have heard me say this for many years now as a staple of fundamental boxing, and it's true for the most part, but it's not always true. It's only true when both punches are meeting at the same time and both punches are going to connect. More often, the straight punch is going to beat the looping punch because the shortest distance from point A to point B is in a straight line, and the straight punch is going to land first, which can throw off the hook itself from the impact. And because you land it first, you can act afterward first. After landing the punch, you can duck your head under the hook like Sean Strickland did against Israel Adesanya. But also, the fighter throwing the straight can hide their chin behind their own shoulder. There are many high-level examples of this happening, like Nate Diaz landing that straight against Leon Edwards. Same exact sequence. You see Nate straight beating Leon's check hook. Then you saw it with Kamaru Usman and Jorge Masvidal. The exact same sequence, the straight punch being the looping. Then you saw it with Alexa Grasso versus Valentina Shevchenko over and over again, where Alexa Grasso was simply throwing the 1-2, the straight punch beating Valentina's lead check hook. And we saw it most recently with Sean Strickland versus Israel Adesanya getting the knockdown of the first round with the exact same sequence. Why are all these high-level fighters falling for this? It's such a fundamental exchange. Well, there are a couple reasons as to why. Number one, most of these fighters throwing the check hook are actually trying to counter the lead hand, not the power hand. So you see, for an example, with Jorge Masvidal versus Kamaru Usman, Usman was throwing jabs before he threw the one-two. And while he was throwing the jab, Jorge constantly would backstep parry the jab and throw his check hook. So you saw Kamaru actually conditioning him to do this. He threw two jabs before he threw the one-two, and when he threw the one-two, he didn't actually throw the jab itself. He faked the jab, then went around to grab Jorge's parry hand and dug his way through with the straight. And you see Jorge attempt to block the lead hand and throw the check hook just like always. And because that hook is coming looping like that, the straight punch is going to get on the inside, connecting on his jaw, knocking him out. This is the exact reason as to why most of these fighters threw the check hook and got hit by the straight right. They're not necessarily trying to counter the hook itself. Sometimes they are, but more often they're trying to counter the jab that came first. Because when someone throws a jab, their open side is where that check hook can land on them. But if they're throwing the straight behind it, the opening is not there anymore. As they can hide behind their shoulder, the punch can intercept the hook. There's a lot going on in a split second. But then there are some times where fighters like Israel Adesanya, for an example, will try to beat the straight using his check hook. He's done it against Robert Whittaker before. Robert Whittaker actually threw the one-two. And what did Adesanya do to counter him with the hook? He leaned back and pivoted slightly to his own left to get on the outside angle of the straight and counter him with the left hook. He was successful with it against Robert Whittaker, which set up the knockout sequence. He tried it also against Sean Strickland, but it didn't work this time. He leaned back, tried to pivot slightly to his left, threw the check left hook, but the difference between Strickland and Whittaker was, Strickland was already closer to Adesanya, and he threw the straight immediately when his jab already fully extended. So it came out a lot faster, connecting to the jaw, and he had enough time because his straight punch landed first, to act and evade the check left hook by going under it. So how do these fighters actually fix this? What is the correct way to counter this straight punch beating looping punch scenario? It's a simple method, but it's not necessarily easy. It's all relied on your footwork and anticipating the straight coming after the jab. If you're just looking to counter the jab with the left hook, you're probably going to eat a straight at some point. Using the check left hook as a means of countering the jab is probably not the best way to revolve a whole game plan around or a whole approach around. Maybe you could do it a couple times, but to rely on this is going to ultimately cause your doom through conditioning. The opponent is going to condition you with jabs and then fire out the right straight on the inside of your looping punch, knocking you out. So it's better to anticipate the straight to come after the jab so you can counter that one more effectively. It all relies on your footwork. You parry the jab, because you don't need some big movement to get away from a jab, parry it, move back, slip on the outside, or even parry the straight to evade it, and that's when you check him with your hook. You saw, for an example, Mark Hunt did this against Czech Congo, right? Mark Hunt, a great kickboxer, moved away from his much longer opponent, which made it even more difficult for him to get away from that straight. He was still able to do so, got touched by it at the end of it, but not enough to really phase him at all, causing the punch to overextend, and in that split second, you're able to land your lead check hook, and in MMA, the impact from a check hook is a lot more devastating than in boxing because of the small gloves. Every single opening to your chin is a lot more devastating 
because you have four ounce gloves in this sport. So these check hooks in MMA are going to be so useful. You can see many examples in boxing as well, from Terrence Crawford to Floyd Mayweather. There's so many examples in boxing where boxers are able to evade the straight by moving their feet. Either they move straight back, which is a lot riskier to do because you're still on line of sight from the straight, causing the straight to overextend, and then you land your check lead hook. Or you could take off an angle like you see Terrence Crawford doing right here, who, in my opinion, probably the best boxer in the world right now, taking the angle when the opponent's throwing his power hand and he's countering them with his lead check hook while pivoting. This is a lot more of an advanced move that you're probably not going to see a lot of MMA fighters use, but it can be done by some of the better boxers. You saw Dustin Poirier, for an example, use this against Conor McGregor, where Conor took a heavy boxing approach in front of him, threw the 1-2, threw it quickly, so it was really impressive to see Dustin counter this as effectively as he did. He leaned away from the straight and then countered it afterward with his check right hook. This is a great way to counter this seemingly unstoppable straight punch being loopy punch scenario in MMA. Just anticipate the straight, move away from it, and counter the overextension.